Hi everyone, it's Sandra. It's September 3rd and I'm starting a new experiment today. You're looking at two containers that contain exactly the same weight of carrot peel and carrot ends. And they also contain exactly the same weight of some of my food processed food scraps that contains egg grit, but you can see there's one difference. This container over here contains about a teaspoon of very well processed vermicompost. Thank you, Teeny. So of course that is teeming with microbes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these foods into two different Starbucks cups that have the equivalent number of holes punched in the equivalent places around the base. And I'm going to add them to a bin to show you the difference what that microbes will make from the vermicompost to the speed of the processing of material. All right, so let's get going. So I mixed up the pulverized food with the carrot peels and in the one um, container, obviously it contained the microbes. And so I mixed it up well and I tucked it into the bottom of the Starbucks cups. I'm actually gonna pop these in the freezer because all the carrot peels were frozen, the food scraps were, were not. So I'll come back when they're thawed and ready to put into a worm bin. Okay, so to continue the experiment, I've got the two cups, they've been frozen and then thawed. Uh, we've got our cup with the plus sign here is the one that has the castings mixed in with the food and the other one not. Now, I don't expect you to do this in your worm bins, but what I'm hoping to show if what Bentley Christie outlined in one of his videos proves to be correct, and I do believe it is, is that when you are feeding your worms, rather than just doing, you know, a layer of new bedding and then your food and some coffee and some grit and then maybe new bedding on top, rather than doing that, just take an extra moment, scoop some of the existing bedding that has this beautiful microbe richness to it and sprinkle that and maybe toss it through your food mixture before you seal it off with all new bedding. Now, if you're like Anne from Plant Obsessed and your new bedding contains, in, it's inoculated with uh, castings, then you're, on your, you're already doing that. But if you're like most of us and your new bedding is just shredded cardboard or something without inoculation, then inoculating the food with fluffing castings in it might be the answer. And I'm hoping this experiment will show, will show uh, a difference in rates of processing between inoculated and non-inoculated food. All right, so but first I'm gonna, just gonna do a check-in on my um, buy the book bin for Anne. This is what I'm going to be using for my experiment. So this is a new bin and why I thought I would use it is because, you know, it hasn't had leaves as bedding or anything like that, that might influence somehow the results. This bin is by the book. <laughs> you know, it's good shredded cardboard bin uh, the worms in here, there's not huge numbers of them, but they're happy and they're hungry. As I've said before, you know, you look for the worms being dispersed all over, even into these dry corners. And then you know if worms are in a dry corner, they are looking for food and I am finding them, I'm finding them everywhere. So uh, these worms, yes, you are, you are hungry and there you go. So this is our avocado pit corner, our avocado shell corner. So this bin, I've been deliberately underfeeding it a little bit. I don't want to demonstrate any, anything that would get us into trouble. I'm deliberately showing you slow and steady can get you where you need to be. You don't need to push the envelope and feed too much. And even this experiment where I'm going to be putting two Starbucks cups in, both with uh, carrot peelings and some blended food scraps, the cumulative total of food is not that much. This is our old feeding zone. There's an avocado. This is with the avocado shells that 
actually had quite a bit of avocado left in them. And there is our little mini avocado worm ball. And here's our little mini avocado shell worm ball. I bump, 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 try to get it out. No, they don't want to come out. So that's fine. They can stay for the party. Uh, and uh, so this area is lovely and moist. Uh, the rest of the bin is quite dry again, getting on the dry side. This um, tote is, uh, it's a lovely worm tote. I'm going to have to ask Anne where she got it. She just brought it down to my house one day. Uh, it is, I believe, Rubbermaid, but I'll try to look um, and put the uh, name of the tote I'll put the dimensions anyway on the screen when I do up this video. All right, Mr. Worm, quit climbing the walls. We're doing an experiment here. Now, the trouble with me doing the experiment in this bin is, you know, um, uh, these Starbucks cups are going to be higher than the surrounding bedding. And that means I'm going to have trouble getting bubble wrap over this bedding that does tend to dry out. So this is... This one has the plus sign on it. So this is our microbe infused bedding. I'm going right to the bottom here. So this has castings in it. So bedding goes up and around. Okay, no, no, I wanna be even. And this was the last feeding zone. So if worms exit here, then they might find this first. So trying to be fair here. So I'm going to put change of plans. I always do that, it seems. I'm going to put the experiments quite a distance from the worms. We know these worms crawl. So these two experiments are going to go very close to each other. So the worms will be able to go, hmm, which way do I want to go? There's this way and that way. This non-experiment, our control, uh, I, I actually teach research. So <laughs> this is our control and this is our experimental one. Uh, the control group has no castings infused or inoculated. The experimental uh, cup has castings infused in it. And I think distance wise, I think I've got them equidistant from, from the actual uh, last feeding zone. Now my job is just to distribute some castings around, maybe put some down the center. There we go. So that is plenty of feeding for this week for these worms. Um, this actually, by putting the cups at that end, allows me to put the lion's share of the bubble wrap. Maybe I'll put it side to side here and keep this bin from drying out. In fact, uh, just quickly before I do that, maybe I will give this bin uh, some water because it was, it was getting dry to the touch. I think my sprayer, oh, there it is, it's working again. It wasn't working the last time I tried it. So yeah, so new bins, you know, even this one, though it's months old, um, it doesn't have enough castings in it yet to hold its moisture. The worms are trying hard, but there's only, a, well, there's more than 125, I'm pretty sure now. But there were only 125 to begin with. So I'll give each cup a good spray. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'll do this corner. But by putting some water in the cups, hopefully that will put some of the juice out into the surrounding bedding and the worms will know there is a treat in there. All right, so I'll keep an eye on this bin and I will do follow-up little snippet videos as I check in over the days ahead. All right, everyone, take care.